right, so here we're going to look at modeling trig functions. Uh, this is example 7. I have eight examples. Each example has its own video. Uh, examples 1 and 2 are just normal sine, cosine. Uh, examples 3 and 4 are normal sine and cosine, uh, but they're reflected about the x-axis. Examples 5 and 6, they have a horizontal shift and Examples 7 and 8, this one, this example, and example 8, they're going to have a horizontal and a vertical shift. Okay. All right, so let's look at this. Well, we, we can determine that this looks like cosine. Okay. But one thing that's different is normally, you know, cosine opens like that. Well, all it is, it's the it's a cosine it's just reflected about the x-axis okay so all what that means is when it's reflected like this is the number in front of cosine and that's what we're going to use cosine it's going to have a negative in front of it right. all right so we know that our function is going to be in this form f of x equals a times cosine bx plus c plus d. Okay. All right. So let's just go ahead and see what we can figure out. Well, I guess the first thing we need to do is probably figure out what d is. Okay what D is. Now that's how far it's shifted up in this case. Okay, D's going to tell you how far it's shifted up or down. So what we need is we need the midpoint. Okay. We need, you know, in a, in a regular cosine function, you've got your max, you've got your min, and this line right here Okay, that's the that goes through the middle. It's it's the same distance from this line to the max as it is from this line to the minimum. Okay, and that's the line we've got to find. I mean, obviously you can see it's three, but let's go ahead and calculate it. Let me show you how to do that. All right, so D is going to be the midpoint are the, the middle of the smallest value and the largest value. Okay, so how do we calculate that? Well, we add them up. One plus, uh, one plus five and half it. So that's six over two, which is three. So there's D. D is three. Okay, so from this, we can actually get A, okay? So we know that this, okay, that's going right through the middle of the graph. So you can see we would go up one, two units, down one, two units. So our amplitude is two, okay? So A, so A, is equal to 2 but since it's mirrored it's negative 2 okay all right so that takes care of D and A all right now we got to get B and C let's go ahead and find B first well we know that the period is equal to 2 pi over b. Well, what we need is we need the length of the period. Okay, the distance from here, negative pi over 6, to here, pi over 2. Okay, well, the length, how do you get the length of the period? Well, it's just the largest value minus the smallest. So I've got the period is equal to the largest value minus the smallest value. 
So that is pi over 2 plus pi over 6. So that would give us what? 4 pi over 6. So that would be 2 pi over 3. Okay. So that's the length of the period. That would be what this is. So if we plug the 2 pi over 3 and replace it, replace period with the 2 pi over 3, well that's 2 pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi over b. And then if we solve for b, well we can cross multiply. So that's going to give me 2 pi b equals 6 pi. So b is equal to 3. Okay. All right. So now we got b. Now we need c, the phase shift. And I'm going to go ahead and write b equals 3 over here. And then I'm going to going to erase this. Give us some room so we can do the we can do the phase shift here. All right. So the phase shift Okay. Well, it's shifted to the left pi over 6. So the phase shift is actually negative pi over 6. Okay. Now, do we remember the formula for the phase shift? Well, we know the phase shift is equal to negative c over b. Okay. So the phase shift is negative pi over 6, so negative pi over 6 is equal to negative c over b. And we calculated b to be 3. Okay. So if we multiply everything by negative 3, that gets rid of the 3 down here in the denominator and changes the negative to a positive, we actually get c is equal to, uh, what is that, pi over two. Okay, so now you can see we have D, we have B, A, and C. So all we do now is just plug it in. So F of X is equal to A, which is negative two, cosine BX, well, let's see, B is three, so that's three X. Okay, then it's uh, plus c. Well, c is pi over 2. Okay, and then plus d. So that would be plus, and d is 3. And so that would be your function. All right, so I hope this helped. Give me a like, subscribe, share it, and thanks for watching.